everybody. So we know we're, we're standing between you and the second break of the day. So we, uh, we promise to, to take this time to um, make this conversation really interesting. Because I think that there's, there's some really fascinating things that are going on at Facebook. I mean, imagine uh, everything that they're doing with the platform and, and how it's evolved, not just in, in the last several years, but even just even in the last nine months, it's been pretty incredible. Um, so we're really fortunate to have, have Blake here with us. You, you heard a bit about him during the introduction. The other thing I should mention is that Blake I was really responsible for setting up um, Facebook's uh, international operations. And he was based in London for a significant period of time and, and has helped open up all of their offices uh, everywhere uh, around the world. And um, if you think about Facebook as being a global platform, that's been a, a crucial part of their business. But Blake, can you start off by just talking to us a little bit about kind of where are things right now? How, how is Facebook seeing the world? What are some of the innovations um, that you, know, you in particular are working on and, and responsible yeah. for? Yeah. Um, I, feel, I, feel, I, feel, I feel underdressed. I walked into the room and I was like, <laughs> oh, I'll come and dress like I'm in Austin, right? And everybody's in a suit. Well, you and, live uh, here in Austin. I do so live in here. So you are representing Austin. Funny thing, well. I flew in from New York and I'm flying back to New York this afternoon, <laughs> but I live here. So it's kind of a bizarre circumstance. The, um, Couple things. One, I just want to say a huge thank you to you guys for including sure. us in, in the agenda. Uh, we've got enormous respect for what you're doing here, Jeremy and Ben, and, and the whole iProspect team around the world. The value you're bringing your clients is, is really undeniable, and you've been a great partner to us. So I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't say thank you for that. Um, yeah, I've been with Facebook for seven years, and uh, so I've I kind of go back to the days where we didn't have much of a much of an ads business at all. And there was no targeting. It was fairly rudimentary. And I remember a converse, early conversation um, I had with Mark Zuckerberg about the ads business. And he said, listen, everything, I love everything about Facebook. Um, I just don't like the ads, right? And how many times have we heard that, that you know, I don't like the ads? Yeah. And, uh, and, and when, you, when you boiled it down, it came down to two things. One, he didn't like the creative in many cases that, were, that, that brands were using on Facebook. He didn't feel that added value to the user experience. And two, he didn't think they were relevant, right? And so you know, there are two ways to resolve that, and we work pretty closely with the creative community trying to figure out the creative side of it, and that is evolving over time. And then there's using technology to make ads more relevant. Mm -hmm. And I tell that story because it's been a, it's been a seven year kind of um, um, journey to get to where we are, where we are today, um, and it started back. We just had native ads, like native ad targeting, and at the time, being able to accurately target a male, 18 to 34, who lived in London, went to Cambridge, and liked Manchester United, was pretty like that was that was almost unheard of six, seven years ago. Um, targeting just didn't people didn't think that way, right? There were proxies for success. Um, but that really wasn't enough because at the end of the day, an 18-year-old is one 18-year-old is very different than another, and different interests and everything else. And so you know, we've evolved pretty far, and we've gotten to a point now where rather than just using third-party, I mean, our first-party kind of native data, which is age, gender, interests, you know, things around social context, likes, um, pages, and brands like that, you know, we opened up um, about maybe 24 months ago to start using third-party data. So we first started with um, FBX, which was our kind of our, our foray into uh, the programmatic world um, and RTB. And so we, we started doing that within, our, within our, our desktop platform. And we found that it was starting to work. Um, it added value. Uh, brands were seeing, good, were seeing good experience from that. They were getting good results. The ROI was positive. Um, we then started looking at other data sources, mm -hmm. right? And we're very much of a platform company, so we don't believe that we have to build everything. We're very open in our, our ecosystem approach. And so we started looking at how do, we, how do we enable brands that have tremendous first party data? So, you know, most of the folks in this room have spent years and years, if not decades, building the knowledge about your users and your, the people that, that consume your brands. Um, how, do we, how do we enable you to connect with users within the Facebook environment using that knowledge and that data? And so we launched a product called Custom Audiences, which allows brands and their agencies and, and the, uh, the, the PMD ecosystem, folks like Social Code and others, um, to actually use that first party data. And we match, we have a very high match, match rate. So our match rate with offline data is around 90%. Right? So if you, have a, if you have an audience of 10 million people in a database, we'll find around 90% of them on Facebook. Just because we have real identity and typically you have real identity. 
whether it be email, address, phone numbers, um, name associated with that sort of accuracy is very high. And because people come back to Facebook so often, it became a really kind of natural thing to do. It's probably our fastest, single fast scoring product, mm -hmm. right? So that was, how do we take first party data and tie it into and allow people to access that? And then the next step was, how do we use third party data? So we launched a product called Partner Categories, which allows us to use poke data or use data logics or Axiom or Epsilon, um, any number of third party data providers that have built great categories that brands are mm -hmm. used to targeting yep. via direct mail or right. through, through others or through email products and allowing those to then connect and then overlay some of our data on top of that. Mm -hmm. um, and so this evolution has been, it's almost the evolution of privacy. So three years ago, the thought of doing that was kind of unheard of, but then six years ago, I never would have put my name up on Facebook. Right? right? I mean, how many people in the room seven years ago would put their name, phone number, friend list, pictures of their children up on the internet in general? Right? If anybody raises their hand, I'd question you, right? Um, I wouldn't, <laughs> right? I, I was very, very, so the world of privacy has come pretty yeah. far. And we still have ways to go and we have to be very privacy centric or sensitive to all this stuff. And then we think about where we're going now and this is, I think, one of the more exciting areas, which is the concept of tying other intense signals into that, with search being a primary yep. one, right? So I know there are some folks from Kenshu and Marin in the room, and, uh, and folks obviously use search in a pretty significant way within this, this audience. Um, and some of the early indicators that we're getting that tying together some of the work we're doing with search mm -hmm. um, it's pretty powerful, like we're having, uh, and there's been a number of white papers that have been published. If you haven't seen them, we can get them to you from both uh, Ken Shu and, and Moran on this. Um, and we're driving you know, 30% performance on top of paid search, right? So we're making search work harder. It's not just about Facebook, it's about making search work harder. Um, and you're doing that through point signals and through you know, the 2% of, of people that convert via search, those under 98% 98, 98 finding them and delivering consistent messaging to those yep. users. Because they've indicated, you know, they've raised their hand um, and just kind of finding them and, and delivering relevant and creative content to them. So we're excited about it, right? Yeah. It takes a lot, it's, it, it takes a village. So it takes an enormous amount of um, technology. It takes a lot of test and iteration. Yeah. Uh, but the, the indications <laughs> we're seeing so far are pretty powerful. 